next up is uh, Shadi Sade from North Carolina University. Shadi, I hope I pronounced your last name correctly. Uh, thank you so much. Let me see if I can share my screen properly this time. Okay. Chadi, you might get a little closer to your microphone. You're a little. All right, here you go. There we go. That's good. Perfect. We see your presentation. It's just not in the slide. There you go. Okay, you're good. Excellent. All right, so my name is Shadi Saidi. I'm an assistant professor at North Carolina State University. And today I'll be talking about some lessons from the field from about a, a decade working with actively heated fiber optic ETS. But before jumping into my talk, I would like to acknowledge a collaborator on some of, of the, the work I'll be presenting to today. Uh, specifically, my uh, grad student, Mahmoud Shahata and Tom DeBell. Tom is with, with us today, uh, as well as John Selker, Scott Tyler, and Chris, and Chris Thomas. So what is actively heated fiber optic? Let's start with that. Uh, so yeah, it's similar to, to all application you have seen before. We are measuring temperature along a fiber optic cable, correct? But this time we are heating the fiber optic. We're actively heating the fiber optic cable using electrical power, typically electrical power, uh, by applying electricity to the metallic uh, uh, component of the fiber optic cable. Now, we are measuring, we are, the, you know, we're monitoring the thermal response of the cable and using some uh, a heat transport model, we can basically uh, infer what is, for instance, air velocity or what salt water flux is, or what we can also measure salt water content. And uh, today we, we heard a couple of, of, of talks on, on how, on Chris Thomas, on how to measure air velocity from Olivier Bour, how to measure salt water fluxes. I will not dive into details of, of this measurement technique. If someone has a question later on, I'm happy to answer. But I would like to, to mention that as, uh, my grad student, Tom DeBell, will have a talk on, on two weeks from now, uh, on 16th of December, on, measure, on using salt water flux measurement to, to uh, look at, uh, to uncover flow passes and groundwater interaction and storm water conveyance structure. It's a very interesting talk. I encourage you to, to, uh, to attend it. As for salt water content, I will just talk briefly about it. This has not been mentioned yet in this uh, workshop. Uh, so um, we can use a actively heated fiber optic to, to measure salt water content. And typically, uh, we, we, uh, we plow the cable into the, so in the soil. You know, we install it under, underground. And also, like I mentioned before, we use the metallic component of the fiber optic cable to inject uh, heat. We, uh, this, is, this is resistive heating at a constant rate, at a very regulated rate. Okay, and we use the optical fiber to monitor so uh, to monitor temperature along the fiber optic cable, and this form the thermal response of the cable, uh, which is function of the salt thermal properties around the, the, the cable, which in turn is function of salt water content. We can infer what the salt water content is. And for instance, uh, for, uh, for a dryer at one particular location, a dryer uh, uh, location will, 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 will have a, a lower thermal conductivity and will have a higher thermal response, for instance. And using um, some uh, uh, different uh, thermal uh, heat interpretation, let's say different approaches to estimate uh, salt water content for thermal responses. We can use either uh, a cumulative temperature increase. We published a couple of papers on, on this model. This is a very empirical model uh, that relate uh, thermal response to salt water content. We also, we can use some uh, more physical model uh, to look at thermal conductivity, for instance, from the thermal responses, and we can relate it to salt water content, usually using calibration curves, um, either generated uh, in the lab, or we can generate this calibration curve uh, in the field by installing, for instance, salt water content uh, station at a particular section of the fiber optic cable that is, uh, uh, that is in the field. Now, uh, today, uh, I, will, I, will, I will mention, uh, I will, uh, let's say, I will, I will mention some key field challenges that we observe during our uh, 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 operation of actively heated fiber optic. And in fact, I can group it and treat a different category uh, based, based on the application. The first, uh, the first group is common to all is, is general challenges and not only uh, related to actively heated uh, application, mainly they're relating to, related to maintaining good calibration. I'll, I'll 
I'll mention briefly. Uh, I'll move on to talk about uh, the challenges that are specific to actively heated application, mainly the signal-to-noise ratio issues and the safety consideration when you're using actively heated fiber optic. And finally, I will talk a little bit uh, about some challenges that is really specific to uh, the uh, ap actively heated application in soil, and mainly the variability of salt uh, background salt thermal properties. Um, let me start first by, by um, in, in talking about calibration mass uh, quickly. Um, the main, let's say, the main source of data gaps I observe uh, during my experience DTS are due to uh, calibration bass failure. So I'd recommend really to invest in your calibration basses. Right. That's mean you have to make it rod and resistant. We lost a couple of messes just because, you know, uh, mouses will be shoe on the cable. Uh, we frost resistance in, in very uh, cold uh, climate uh, uh, calibration codes that are not submerged. And you have to remember that uh, even in, inside a cooler, a covered cooler, we can still observe some evaporation from it. All right, and water can, can you know, they, they uh, uncover really typically the, the, the cable, and we have to, you know, maintain the maintenance of our calibration passes are very important. And also, and most importantly, and it's critical really to mention here, is, you know, the, the reference temperature uh, uh, sensors that we are using. Okay, we, uh, let's say in all long term of a uh, application that's been involved in it, we have one sort or another of some uh, sorry of uh, let's say a reference and reference temperature sensor that uh, was failing on us okay so the the best approach we we learn it for you know the hard way is to double the number of of thermometers or uh, you know a temperature sensor that we put on our uh, bases uh, just to reduce the the, uh, the chances that we don't have accurate measurement of uh, reference temperature for our calibration bass okay again I skip a little bit um, to talk more to talk about the signal to noise issue. This is uh, specific to actively heating fiber optic cables, and uh, specifically in, in the field. Actually, if we want to use actively heated fiber uh, actively heated fiber optic cable, you have to consider the signal to noise challenges. What I mean, signal to noise, um, uh, typically, you know, what, what's the heating rate? What's the heating rate? Uh, that you are injecting into your cable. What's the th thermal signal you are, you, are, you are obtaining from, uh, from heating compared to your, your measurement error? And, and, and this plot we observe over here, this is an example from um, uh, measuring wind speed with uh, uh, actively heated fiber optics. This is from a 2015 paper um, on, on this topic. Uh, on the top plot, we, we observe the uh, uh, temp, uh, wind speed as uh, obtained from BTS and the red dots, and the blue lines are uh, sonic anemometer uh, wind speed measurement. Okay, and on the right side is one one to one plot, scatter plot. Um, as you've seen in, on the right hand side of this plot, that as the wind speed increase, we are well, we, we observe an increase in error. Okay. Um, and this error, you know, we've done in this paper some error analysis to just understand how uh, signal to noise impact the, the overall uh, error and the wind speed estimate. And this increase in error is really related to signal to noise ratio. Okay, that we, we have, we can see from the bottom plot over here. And here, what I mean by signal to noise ratio is the difference between the heated cable to the ambient temperature as measured by a, a passive uh, fiber optic cable. Okay. And the error is the signal, uh, we talk about signal, the error is the error in temperature measurement. Okay. As we can see from this, uh, the error, uh, you know, that's the x axis, the y axis is relative error in wind speed measurement. Uh, as the signal to noise ratio decrease, obviously we are, we are, we are seeing an increase in error in wind speed estimate. But I would like to, to, to point out that above certain value, above a signal to noise ratio of about seven, we observe this is a 95% uh, confidence interval in our estimate. The, the, the error increases uh, uh, exponentially. So there is at a certain point, we really our measurement technique will break down. 
Okay, so we have to be, you know, in a sense, when whenever you use, and, and we, we observe something relatively similar, and also when we are measuring salt water content and other application too. Uh, you know, signal to noise uh, ratio is something to consider when you are uh, uh, deploying in the field. Um, and mainly because you are limited in the field on, of, let's say, for amount of, you know, how to increase, for instance, how to increase uh, the signal to noise uh, ratio is basically by increasing either increasing the signal, sorry, or decreasing the, the, the error. Increase the signal, you can do that by increasing the heating rate, for instance, all right? But at, there is certain limit for it you have to be aware of, so as, such as your instrumentation, that's as a resistance of your, your heater, or maybe you don't want to introduce some artifact in your data, such as, you know, buoyancy effect and so on. Uh, so there's a certain upper limit uh, for it. Uh, and the error, how to decrease the error, is mainly uh, by, by experience using this method is by repeated measurement, all right, or by averaging over a, a larger uh, spatial scale, all right. And basically we sacrifice a little bit of the temporal or uh, the, the spatial uh, error, a special resolution of our measurement just to increase signal to noise ratio. Um, again, you know, with, with actively heated application, make your, you know, the, the careful consideration for, to, for your uh, heating, heating rate, the, average, the, the amount of, of uh, uh, let's say, heat pulses you can uh, apply or repeated measurement so that to obtain a proper signal uh, to noise ratio for your application. About one more minute, Chandra. All right, let's, let's uh, jump to safety consideration. Remember that we are using el electrical current, all right, to heat the cable. So safety has to be, you know, top consideration in our application. Uh, so luckily so far we didn't have any, any issue and mainly because we are uh, complying to a strict protocol, for instance, you know, no, no person, no animal, to be near where we are, we are uh, injecting uh, electricity on the ground, for instance, along the cable. Um, and let's move on to, to the last um, challenges that's specific to, uh, uh, to soil motion measurement. Um, in the field, in many application, you know, many uh, situation, you'll observe a, a quite, you know, uh, uh, quite a bit of variability and background thermal property of the soil. There is no, no, not one unique relationship relating soil water content to your thermal response, either thermal conductivity or uh, TQ, for instance. And, and, and your, in your deployment, you have to account for this, this structure of the stage special variability. And really, before measuring it, it's really hard to, understand, to, 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 to uh, uh, design an experiment around that. Uh, and the main reason for this error is just because thermal, there is no unique relationship relating soil water content to thermal conductivity or diffusivity, for instance. Okay, um, and it will change with soil type, change with compaction, changes with uh, the, the, the uh, uh, bulk density, for instance. Um, and some ways we, you know, we are now using two approaches to avoid these issues. Uh, the first approach is uh, by increasing the, the amount of measurement you know, the independent measurement of soil water content uh, using data analytic and machine learning to, to, to infer what's, what should be the calibration curve along the fiber of the cable. And also, to wrap up, all right, great. That just the quick mention is that we are using a novel design that is independent, you know, using a heat capacity approach, uh, measuring heat capacity, which has well-defined relationship would simplify the calibration. This is soil let's say, independent of soil properties. Right. All right, super, thank you, Charlie.